in South Africa has been independent from apartheid for how long now? 1994, do the mathematics, but almost 40 years, okay? 30 something odd years. Oh Lord, have mercy. India, I'm hot, okay? I'm boiling, I'm boiling. We inherited electrical infrastructure from the apartheid regime when we entered into it. When we entered into the new regime, the electrical infrastructure that was erect in the apartheid regime was about, at the time, you know, in its mid 20s to its 30s. So it was basically due for a refurbishment. And it would have been refurbished if the government had stayed the same. But don't nobody want an apartheid regime staying the same for the sake of infrastructure, road building, and electrical infrastructure. You're not gonna go and keep people oppressed just so they can keep building buildings. Buildings. So a black government comes into play and they just ignore electrical grids. They just ignore the tarnishing or devastating the chipping away the what do they call this? Um, eroding um, wearing and tearing current infrastructure just ignore it pocket money ignore it pocket money ignore it pocket money and now the electrical infrastructure is choking like an old man with emphysema for crying out loud barely able to breathe because it is now like a geriatric frankly it's about 60 something years old it is 60 years old and the power plants have not been replaced they have not been replaced they have not been rebuilt they've just been maintained even then as with patch even then as with patchwork like putting a you know Sellotape on a glass that breaks, hoping that it's going to stay together. And then you pour water and expect that it's not going to be water, you know, in, in these perforated or these little tiny cracks that, that it's not going to come out. They are literally sticking together, putting putting it together with sellotape or sticky tape, the electrical infrastructure. And now we are dealing with multiple power cuts that are several hours along a day. And these randos here in these streets in South Africa are like, I guess this is South Africa. This is where they, this is the way that it is. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry, it's not. Last night, God gave me a memory, a memory. It was not a vision, but a memory of when I was a kid. Growing up in Tladi my grandmother, uh, in my grandmother's house, there was this house that sold ice cream not far from uh, my, my grandmother's house. It was just like one, two, three, four, five steps and you're there, okay? This house, I remember every time we walked past it, it like you could smell the ice cream from as far as the street. It was divine. So it lured you in. They sold, they sold some of the most delicious ice cream. And frankly, I don't know why. It, I, we couldn't find anywhere other than that household. I guess they had that competitive advantage. It, the owner there who used to sell these little ice creams to the children who would purchase it would scoop only a tiny little amount of ice cream. Uh, for that 50 cents which was like a whole bunch of money back then as a child with like a massive cone so we always used to say of her that she was cheating us because we bought with so much money all that ice cream and she just gave us this little tiny scoop with this big fat cone so there was very little ice cream to go around we would lament god reminded me of that and i was like if that woman if that woman was running that ice cream business in 2022 she would not be scooping such tiny little scoops she would be like giving these kids as much as she can just to get rid of stock so it doesn't go to waste because rather break even rather break even than literally lose all of the money that you invested in purchasing ice cream because with these power cuts that are many fold a day many of them a day nobody can run an ice cream shop i was born in 1984 so when that ice cream uh little not company sorry what do you call this little business home business was running i was like what six seven years old six seven years old so it could have been no later than 1990 1991 it was yet to be even the new south africa with the democratic elections it was the old regime but it was fizzling out negotiations were being made for us to be entered into a better regime type establishment thing and that woman and man it was a married couple could from that house sell ice cream in a group areas act location that would be soweto with 24 hour electricity trust that her stock is not going to run out to children in the street she would sell this ice cream that would come into her house not give her five bob 50 cents and purchase the ice cream she could do that she not only they not only sold ice creams but they also sold the icy uh, the little icicles yeah goodness if you're black you'll get what i'm talking about uh sigzo yeah like little icicles okay uh those kinds of businesses in the small little smes in the gassies cannot thrive anymore they can't survive that's those aren't the kinds of kinds of businesses that you can get generators for they don't have money for it they're not big enough businesses to have alternative strategies should there be a power cut they don't have backup plans 
brands like hospitals and uh, hospitals should not even have to deal with this but big organizations that can afford to have generator power booster rebooster power when you are running his puzzle shop Egasi, in the hood when you're running a small little sme in the township you don't have money to purchase generators and in the latter part of apartheid just as we were entering into new south africa black businesses in the gassies could thrive because they at least trusted that insofar as they paid the electricity bills they will get electricity so they could run ice cream shops i had that memory god reminded me of that ice cream spaza it wasn't a spaza it was a little tiny house that had that sold ice cream and it smelled delicious okay that come those companies not company goodness company is the worst word those little tiny businesses all right i i bet now in soweto no longer are as thriving as they used to be uh where they sell uh, the ice see my grandmother also used to sell um the coke what do you call this like a uh, coca-cola fanta whatnot they call drink and beer she didn't even have a license just putting that out there to sell alcohol but you know illegalities just killed like in human sin type establishment thing she also used to sell my kipkip le mazimba that would be like crisps and small little popcorny looking multicolored you would like oh goodness like english is causing my brain to get like all different kinds of short circuits right now like there's smoke coming out mm, right my grandmother used to sell that some of her produce her stock was refrigerator it lent on on the fridge it leaned on the refrigerator there had to be a fridge mayo my grandmother used to sell the mayo mayo is this absolutely delicious delectable like dairy heavy like it has to be frozen it, it's a it, it has to be frozen it, just think it's some milky ice cream it's like frozen yogurt but it's not really frozen yogurt yeah you get my point mayo i don't know how to just grab it black south africans would understand south africans would understand i can't help you if you're living somewhere else but these delicious things that have to be frozen they have to be frozen otherwise it's like what are you doing you could indeed drink it melted but it only goes a long way if it is frozen my grandmother used to sell mayos she used to sell beers and cool drinks and she also used to sell my kipkip mazimba my kipkip and mazimba at this time would likely be the only business that my grandmother would be able to maintain my uncle took that business over he's still selling i don't know if he has a license he's just ever since then gotten a license beers and cool drinks but people have to if at all they're going to purchase those cool drinks and those beers they have to take in their stride that they're going to buy them warm that they're going to buy them hot but they definitely cannot he can definitely no longer sell that much as a fact mayo no longer can businesses in soweto sell the icy no longer can businesses in soweto sell ice cream small ones that uh, run from out of households where kids just go there knock on a window and then they purchase i i wonder how those businesses are doing today those are the small little tiny things that nonetheless are like veins of blood that ultimately get to the heart that is the economy of a country and this nation has and mind you that like i'm that was soweto soweto was a it was a historically black only area yeah, right it still is largely still very much black um i don't know i think there might be some white people living in soweto right now however it was historically a group areas act for black people only and yet despite it being for black people only and us getting sort of kind of like the scraps of provision by the apartheid regime it operated with it operated with 24 hour electricity and here it is that today go old bodge so there is this like chocolate block ridiculous it's basically like a luli's interchange but in soweto right it's think a very intricately woven web of like highway road infrastructure right think something like that a busy intersection a very busy busy intersection without robots for the life of me the black government the lack of provision for black townships or black areas or the way that they're so corrupt and just don't want to fix stuff and the way that they don't want to go and maintain dying or dead robots they uprooted from old bodge just to help you it's like a jugular vein it's an artery guys it is like a main connecting road in soweto that literally brings all of soweto together it is literally like the jugular of soweto all right from the you, you from deep soweto like you literally if you you start go deep kloof and you end up all the way go lengthy or a baby pretoria no you pretoria, i just say pretoria i wanted to say protea okay so people don't understand what i'm talking about that aren't from soweto it's like the one long road that connects an entire city and it's just like one central road yeah and everybody in that city in the various like clumps 
of villages in their city or um, what do you call those little towns in their city if they want to connect and join the main highway or if they want to connect and join a new city if they want to go into a new city or a new province they first have to come into it's like an interstate connection type thing they first have to come on this road and then go to town so a lot of people that work in like other suburbs like in the northern suburbs in Santon or in downtown Johannesburg that live in Soweto they have to use this one road called Old Botch it's Old Botch I think they've ever since then called it Baraguana I stand corrected haven't been to Soweto in a minute okay but yeah that one road if you're gonna go to work you know and like from Deep Kloof, nah, in fact, Deep Kloof is already at the very end, but like from Pimville, if you want to go to work and you work in uh, Santon, you have to go on Old Botch and then connect the M1 North. You have to connect using, oh yeah, it is a jugular vein. Who in the world as a government makes a decision to sever the uh, blood flow continuity of a jugular without expecting a blood clot? It was already chock a block. That road, even even on a weekend even on a weekend you will be bumper to bumper you can't catch a break the only time that you will likely drive smoothly on old botch in Soweto is at night in the wee hours of the morning a.m. like kids basically who are partying they're the only ones that can drive at their leisure on there but if it's morning on Monday to Sunday it's chock blocked morning up until like 5 8 8 p.m. 8 30 at night it's horrendous and there are very few alternatives very few alternatives you could try and go via Dobsonville but it's another nightmare there on its own you, you, you get my point yeah no they made a decision on that road I'm trying to help you understand why we're going home guys because this is not just an issue in South Africa but it's across the world the whole world is groaning Do you understand they made our government after robots robots that, that would be traffic lights after they kept on breaking and them having to maintain that switch them back on again first of all it was an issue already originally on old botch road to find robots just working all of them like and, and literally from the very from up there in deep Kloof, all the way up until lens for all of them to be working smoothly and swimmingly on in any given one day there would be at a minimum four or five if not ten of them at intervals that are broken so hence the traffic issue and where it is that you find that situation if that all robots are not operating guys the rule that applies is that it becomes a four-way stop it becomes a four-way stop where cars must yield right wait for other cars to pass and then you go those are the rules of broken robots in this country and everybody just kind of understands them if something is a four-way stop it moves at a snail's pace what helps sometimes are outsurance points men but if these navigating men and women are not on the street it's even slower than that do you understand those points men still the robots are very slow so traffic is very slow when they're there but it's better than when we have to navigate it ourselves and stop then go stop then go stop then go you will be stranded for half an hour waiting just to go over a street okay so basically a yield and a four-way stop is the worst worst idea that you can ever come up with for a four-way stop on a busy intersection it is the worst thing that you can hook up you do four-way stops inside in the inner cities inside your little neighborhoods where you, you've just exited your house and it's like your, your street and then the adjacent one with your next door neighbors etc that's okay to have a four-way stop that's okay but a main intersection that needs robots that needs robots and they made a decision to oh lord have mercy as when i saw that when i saw that i was like as when is this gonna stop all these things happened in my persecution like you know when you're seeing a, a gradual decline of a country happening in front of your eyes and there's nothing you can do about it in these years that i've been persecuted this happened they uprooted robots from one of the busiest intersections oh lord have mercy it's like it connects lakeview and rockville and dobsonville that one yes and pinville like you go that way you go to pinville you go that way you go to rockville on the side you go to lamini that side it's dobsonville they decided to uproot robots they they were robots histor historically they decided to uproot robots and hook up some roundabout long winding yielding stop sign mess and it is at such it is literally the heart the center if this is like a jugular vein that particular intersection is at the very middle of it so basically they chock a blocked traffic that goes all the way back to protea or lenzi and the one that goes all the way past okay, going to pinville and a deep loof etc like yeah they made a decision to put a very 
ridiculous roundabout funny little thing in the middle of a jugular vein and so made people wake up an hour early just to get to work so if before you used to wake up at five now you gotta wake up at four if before you used to wake up at seven now you have got to wake up at six just to accommodate in Dabayoguti the fact that our government made a decision because they don't want to keep on maintaining robots that die because they don't want to keep on switching them back on because they yeah in the name of we want to avoid a power cut not power cuts what is this accidents they then decided to just say you know so it's a residence you're gonna have to wake up literally one to one and a half hours early just to get to work going forward because we're sick and tired of maintaining these robots um like really like just the yield and stop and round about that's what you're gonna do those are the kinds of things that the black government has done in this country there is you know the apartheid regime was a sinful wicked regime in this nation it was wicked like no man's business and after it got repealed everybody cheered they celebrated because we overcame conquered wickedness darkness the lord delivers delivered us and then what took it over was a more nefarious regime but this time around it's not racist it's just irresponsible and so south africa is breaking apart a tear torn apart at the seams now we're living integrated with white people in our suburbs and now we're able to attend the same schools with one another it, it, the, the whole land is diversified but with that positive then came the fact that oh guess what huh, we're all in the dark several hours a day mm, yeah hey um multiple times in that day too we're in the dark we we come out of uh, we, we we stop rioting and marching and and now we just kind of sit in the dark our computers die because of short circuiting thanks to power cuts that is what it is that in you know we inherited so the better regime is actually worse off the one that overwhelmed the the historically abusive one is just now hard to deal with because everybody gotta be politically correct when they speak they they can't even make it clear that you went and you took over the government and look at how you have destroyed everything you, you people just gotta be like politically correct they can't even highlight that the black government took over south africa and basically just stopped fixing stuff they stopped up, uh, up keeping they stopped maintaining they stopped building electrical infrastructure we've got towers power power plants that are 60 years old my mom was not even born yet Sorry, my mom was just a baby, two years old. She was born in 1958 when they, when the apartheid regime built those power plants. And now she is 63 and they are still here. She can recognize graffiti on those walls if at all it was written from when she was a teenager. That That is what we're dealing with. So are we really in a better South Africa? No, everything is just in decline. There is a moral turpitude on the ground. Sin has made sure that even after the Lord delivers us as a people from one bad situation, we just go on right ahead and throw ourselves into a brand spanking new one. Everything is intermingled and intertwined in wickedness and its commencement date is the fall. Genesis 3. Genesis 3. And because of this, there will be an increase in lawlessness. So no, homo sapiens, you haven't been around 300,000 years because you would have been extinct by now, like the dinosaurs. You've been around six. You've been around 6,000 years. And now at the six, at the five, at the 6,000th year mark, you have so destroyed the earth that the book of Revelation now has to come to act. It is written in God's word there in, in the book of Revelation that the Lord is going to destroy those who destroy the earth. Do you seriously think that you have been able to keep yourself in a neat little bunch humanity? For, for what was that? Is it, did I say 600 or 300? Do you seriously think that for 300,000 years you have prospered to keep things in a bunch and only in this last 100 years have people gone crazy? Do you seriously think that just the past I mean, goodness gracious, with, with the loosening of rules, with the, with the giving of legroom to people to do more, they are sinning more too. The more they loosen restrictions on your liberties to roam freely, to who you can date, you can now date across your races. Now you've gone into a whole orgy with like the, the rainbow nations across the world, like all different kinds of flags are on your bed. You have got World Cup type number of flags as like mm, checklists of your little black book if you're a man or a woman that is sexually active in this world. There are all different kinds of um, names for different sexualities that are historically, were historically frowned upon, like viciously, that not today are having advocates actually speak out in public without being arrested or put on some kind of like watch list or whatever for saying things like this because they are a person to of, 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 of interest a person to just be wary of like just watch them like the whole agenda with maps for instance 
minor attracted persons are you serious i'm sorry it's a pedophile but that is allegedly a derogatory term how far do we have have, have do, did we have to fall to get to a point where pedophiles can speak out freely without people watching them like a hawk now daily because one of these days they might just pounce on your kid and explain it away with the fact that look this is just how i feel there is no end to what people will call normal and okay now and with the loosening of rules with basically the loosening of uh, think about the homosexual movement right with the loosening of rules in that regard across our multiple our many societies now gay people can marry so to did they then open a door for these these maps to make their way into the lgbtqia plus plus thing um the hypersexualization of children the pornographizing if you if that if you want to call that even a word of kids the training of little children uh by drag queens yes this stuff is happening a whole bunch in the u.s but remember zonke les invest galagui u.s they come to where it is that we're at so it's only a matter of time before the world gets woked up but the woke agenda is not even the only thing that's wreaking havoc in, the, in in our lives it is the fact that we have come a long way to overcome his historically oppressive regimes that unnecessarily afflicted human rights and rightly they ought have been eradicated but now they have given way to things that ought not have been allowed at all like even in the slightest like they, no, we can't catch a break god is not mocked whatsoever human race you have so understand you're gonna reap it and since you have sown corruption since you have sown sorry to the flesh you are going to reap a corruption he gives you an olive branch leg room frees you from systematic oppression and then you come in as a new government and don't maintain your country and then you allow all different kinds of sins to now fester in the new south africa now gay marriage is allowable now the lgbtqia agenda with its myriad additional extra letters within that acronym is allowable now which craft is not regulated it is allowable now people can just do whatever they want guess who believes that alistair crowley started this religion called thelema and its main motto is do what thou wilt for that is the whole of the law whereas the lord says that no you don't get to do what thou wilt for that is exactly what is going to condemn you eternally the whole of the law is rather love and here it is that the human race is just running amok doing its own thing thinking that they're going to be okay tomorrow all these liberties are not really liberties it is like a, a, an exacerbation of slavery to sin as if though you didn't already have a problem yesterday it's just gotten worse so my lips are dry so the fact that as a human race you now can basically just outwork your deepest desires is the reason why things just had to be brought to a blistering end the story that i told about that girl that i used to work with in my former organization where you're dealing with somebody that frankly is you you know you can't you can never catch a break with them but then deep down inside you want their approval or their acceptance and so you keep on cajoling yourself and moving yourself in all different kinds of ways and breaking your neck twisting and sleeping in a funny position just to get them to not be so cold to you today do you know who are the only people on earth who are left still trying for such people who are still trying for countries with no electricity anymore who are still trying for souls of men who are lost who think they've been here 300,000 years it's christians i made mention earlier that i've always been like this but only when i came to christ was i finally able to rest in it because it used to break my heart a lot it still does prior to my redemption where i'm not one of those people that literally have a i don't care mindset i like i'm not I'm, I'm not about to rock up here and say i don't care what you think i don't care about the opinions of men i don't care about the uh what people say on my timeline i don't care what no i do i i i i, I can be alone i don't need ever to when i was working in corporate i don't know how many people used to say i'm not here to make friends i'm here to work all in the name of justifying being mean to colleagues being savage <laughs> being unkind and for me it's like no i'm sorry some of the biggest friendships that i fostered were always in an environment where i was working it was at school and it was at work i spend my time with these people i have the most in common with them because i'm in the same line of work why in the world would i go to work and imagine i can't find a best friend there and why in the world would i imagine i can go to work and not find the love of my life there why is it 
inappropriate or wrong for me to imagine or naive is the better word why is it naive for me to imagine that i can start working at an organization and imagine that maybe i might just meet my husband here where else am i going to meet him i am more likely to meet a suitor of a suitable husband a suitable man in the office than i am at the club than i am at a bar than i am at the mall just walking to go and buy groceries because i will have gotten to know them work with them and understand what they're about and they're most safe to be with because you've sort of kind of you know gauged their rap sheet they come to work every day they have a particular behavior that you've already uh, um successfully measured likely can be trusted just watching their work ethic alone and so therefore to rock up in an office environment because it's this place that is capitalistic and everybody's trying to make money and anticipate that you're there not to make friends you are being stoic you are being immobile you're being rigid you're being a robot on that day i have never subscribed to that mentality and it got me crushed bruised broken in the worst way by a horde a swarm of irresponsible souls that had that mindset and so they imagined that because i was just a colleague they can just kick me like i'm a dog including rara by the way she ended up being among the people who hurt me they imagined that because i'm just a colleague they can just swipe me literally wipe me off the south african economy because they came here to work and so wonkumuntu is just gonna be a savage i am incredibly intelligent i'm very hard working as well so i would have made for a really great employee anywhere and so therefore a great contributor to any country's economy mine in particular in south africa where i'm staying i got wiped off this country's economy with these kinds of concerns that i have for the nation with this kind of heart and this kind of work ethic i would have been beneficial to my country but a bunch of defeatist and selfish balloons in corporate where i was working decided to kick me out because i was too good at my job and they were competing with me at the expense of the company's value proposition at the expense of the organization's competitive advantage at the well because the good staff is a competitive advantage to an organization um you know workforce at the expense of what we were actually all doing on the ground they would much rather secretly low-key in their own little corners destroy their company's future than have to deal with this colleague with whom they're competing anger is overwhelming and fury is a flood but who can stand before jealousy so the country that is south africa is not standing now it is no longer able to stand because of jealousy because the thing that happened to me when i was in corporate is the very thing that has happened to millions of south africans, south africans across the board and it is also what is happening in government where responsible premiers responsible president elects responsible um MPs, etc. Responsible municipal councillors are being booted off by irresponsible souls that have got unsavory business practices up their sleeves, happy to become the biggest and baddest saboteurs to pull the rug from under the feet of responsible people, such that all that is teeming about our government hallways are those gangsters, frankly, that should not be running the country, that pocket funds. So sober and moral beings that want to proliferate indeed looking for the benefit of the country the agenda of the nation have been booted out by people with their own selfish agenda who pocket funds such that electrical infrastructure that is infrastructure that is 60 years old coughing up blood now because it has got tuberculosis is still right like the main infrastructure of the country and so of course we have got multiple power cuts a day and those aren't even the the the, 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 the that is not even the most challenging issue that we have got in this country need i tell you about the femicide rate rate need i tell you about the rape rate the crime rate generally in this country need i mention to you that south africa is the top country it is the worst nation it has made number one in the worst ways ever in this world we're headed for a failed state basically when it comes to being a woman it is the worst nation to live in as a woman so power cuts are not the worst problem that we have the worst issue that we have is that as a mom you can come home one day to have police knock on your door and tell you your daughter has been murdered by some boyfriend that is what's going on in this country we have got so many issues our unemployment rate is the worst last time i checked second to nothing but russia we had the highest suicide rate in this nation now we've also got a drought but nobody's gonna pick it up until never mind they're cutting power two three times a day but now they're cutting water too that is the worst time ever for me i ask the lord please can you take me out of here before that happens because i can deal with no power but i can't deal without water those are the issues on the ground and what has caused them sin that has done what grown it has become fervent 
It has ramped up, do you understand? And people are still sticking to their guns. I didn't want to record a video today because I'm still busy uploading a whole bunch of work. I'm still busy sharing a whole bunch of work. I'm editing a whole bunch of work. But I am sharing this work now because I am violently brokenhearted. I am exquisitely hurt by the fact that I am being treated by my own family members the way that I got treated by that lackluster colleague that I for the life of me could never please she ended up putting a whole bunch of wishcraft on me but you see the thing about these people is they put a whole bunch of wishcraft on other people so I'm likely not her only victim so I shall not rap on about how I'm the victim of a mean girl here in the last the deal the reason why I have raised that trick at all was to help you understand that mankind in the last days are not gonna have any natural affection for each other anymore that they are going to basically transfer you know <sighs> In the days of apartheid, we got afflicted for simply being black. And then we overcame that. And Indian and colored and whatever, right? And then we overcame that. And now we're being afflicted for simply being South African citizens. So it turns out that when one sin is conquered, another one just comes and lodges itself and, you know, makes like a, a flower and blooms, eh? It just, like, uh, sits in you and proliferates itself. So when human beings, therefore, overcome one issue, they will inevitably create a new one. So if you, they just increase in wickedness, they don't, they never say enough. It's written in God's word that, like, death and hate, death and sheol and healing basically the eye of man is never satisfied so you get what you want in life and now you're like how what else can i do and in so scratching yourself like that you then invent innovate oh lord have mercy it is written in romans 1 that mankind will perpetually be innovating inventing new ways to sin look it up I, I, you can't make this stuff up they invent a new way to sin it's like when they're sitting in righteousness it's like when they're sitting in restoration it's like when they're sitting in god has redeemed us mode they are like oh what can i break and then they break it so you go from dealing with a girl in the office you go from dealing with a person that you just you know i don't know what you've done to me i don't i, I don't know what i've done to you to make you treat me like this but it doesn't matter because at least I have my friend. At least I have my mom. At least I have my sister. At least I have my dad. At least I have my uncle and my cousin. And at least I have my next door neighbor who's super nice. You comfort yourself when human beings are mean and you don't know why they're cold to you. You can't understand why this gratuitous fool is hurting you like this. But you know what? Hey, ha, your boyfriend is going to hug you about it. Hmm? Your husband is going to say, there, there. And then your husband becomes that girl. Your wife becomes that girl. Your child becomes that girl. Your neighbor, the sweet one, becomes that girl. And then your cousin becomes that girl. Your friend, your bestie, that boyfriend that I mentioned. When then your sisters become that girl where in the world shall we run those of us who are trying to live peaceably it's written in god's word that if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord he will make even his enemies to live at peace with them the lord has done that successfully for us as the church over six thousand years but there's going to come a time in the history of the human race that is unprecedented in comparison to other times in the history of the human race where wickedness is going to be so rampant that god will have to take his children out because they no longer can function or thrive they can't say hi to neighbors without being pillared they can't have relationships with people without their mood swinging on them changing on them like a mood ring they can not trust that their husband is going to be the same man today that they were that he was yesterday they cannot anticipate that their boss is going to treat them with the same level of respect that they did yesterday because they are on and off they keep on flickering like a hazard they are a yo-yo up and down and you don't know where to put your feet there is no rest there is no rest because you don't know what you're dealing with that mood swinging random female that i used to work with for the life of me god have mercy on me has become the world around me i was able to comfort myself with the fact that 95% of the colleagues with whom we, we, we could relate with this chick's mood swings. I was able to comfort myself with the fact that, oh, at least I can chat with this girl. At least I can go with that colleague and, you know, fist bump him. At least I can trust that John and Jane are going to be the same tomorrow as they are today. But then when Jane, John and Jane are as unpredictable as the weather, the same way that that random Renee girl was, there's nowhere to live for a person that is exhausted by the moral turpitude of society of, of, of society there is no way to go guys there, there is literally no place where you could put your feet down when this stuff has come inside your own household like it is written in matthew 10 it has worn spikes even hmm? it's grown horns horns it has fangs that have got salivate on it 
on them when all that has reared its ugly head in your life in an environment that is literally too close for comfort you are beleaguered on all sides on that day you're squeezed into a wall with your naivety in expecting human approval the lord made mankind to desire affection the lord created his law and put it on our hearts the lord is the one that made us to go be fruitful multiply to fashion one another around one another. The Lord is the one that said, love one another. To kumbaya, basically, a camaraderie, that thing that you think is naive, the Lord built us to be that way. And the thing about the human race is when, when, when you start to anticipate something that God created as a naive way of thinking, you then start to come up with these bizarre concepts in your head that are frankly menacing to listen to and yet people are listening to them and you end up being like that Harari, Hival, Hival Harari, whatever, that young Oki from the World Economic Forum. You start speaking taboo things like him. You start doing speech in public that are so taboo that you can't for the life of you imagine why anybody at all even listens to him why is he not blocked why is he not cancel cultured since we're living in cancel culture a man speaking about how homo sapiens will no longer be a thing to talk about in the next 100 years a man that is speaking about how it is that surveillance now is no longer going to be extraneous out of us but internally where we're going to be surveilled where technology biology is going to be fusing merging with physio physio physiology where our biological makeup is going to be merging with robots where artificial intelligence is going to be inside us and that then is the best way to surveil a person you can tell when they're about to commit a crime it's literally like that movie minority minority report um where it is that pre-crime was like a whole thing where they based on your heartbeat can just arrest you in a store because you've got a nanobot in your body based on your palpitations never mind your pal pal palpitations but what is this like a Per perspiration you can be called like just followed around as a person of interest lest you should end up doing something strange based on the dilation of your pupils not only do we have facial recognition software which is still extraneous out of us we are also now dealing with the investing into technology that is being more gradually accepted as okay by the human race things that come inside our bodies he spoke about how COVID-19 made it possible for them to start surveilling people on a biological level level physiological you're to you're totally healthy you don't need to have some camera roaming around in your nether regions because you're getting a colonoscopy you're healthy but because you have consumed something that is running in your bones you can now be surveilled by never mind your doctor for your health care reasons your health care concerns sorry but by your government but by people who don't even know anything about the human physiology like whatever his name is that World Economic Forum guy. The world, when the WEF and the UN know about your health, what in the world is going on? When it is not the uh, World Health Organization that has your, in, your your health information, but it is the UN now? It is the W, the, the World Economic, what, 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 you know? Separation of powers is an excellent concept given to man by God, that they might indeed hold people accountable across various sectors. And so megalomaniacalism and despotism just too much power in one e environment will not be concentrated because we know what happens in societies where that is a thing and so therefore it is always important to keep powers separate when you start to merge them you're dealing with all different kinds of things there is no end to what human beings can do and here it is that we've got the wef merging with the w um h o merging with the un merging with um a i merging with like a series that i meant for by that i meant to say amnesty international like you are getting all of these bodies across the world that are coming together in one accord and it is apparently for our own better judgment when we know as the human race that we have managed to maintain free societies through a separation of powers through a separation of powers and yet such things are being eroded away at they're fizzling away understand that the beginning of the separate of the dis dis dissolution of those lines that barricade powers starts in corruption where corrupt men are not content with just being in the judiciary but they also want to be part of the executive they want to be part of the legislature so they do shady business deals that cause only a few people to rise up to power sufficiently enough for them to erase the lines that make powers separate and we are headed towards that as a human race when then all that is going on and there is no way for us as Christians to successfully live never mind live but also try and show people what's going on that they might not allow themselves to be lent over to a dehumanizing of them when there's no longer such an environment then we need to go home we need to go home the human race is not yet finished off in the 
sense that there's nothing in them of a conscience and that there's nothing in them of humanity left. But what is currently problematic is the fact that there is a very strong desire for them to overcome basic human constitution that keeps us sane and sober. You cannot, as a person, imagine it okay to desire no affection, to be content with everyone you meet treating you like trash. There is no normalness in that. And so it is not naive to desire affection, to want approval and to be hurt at wicked comments on YouTube, to disable your comments because you can't deal with how vitriolic some people can be. It is normal. It is the original way that we are supposed to be. Do you not see I am the one here that is safe? Whereas everybody else isn't. That is not in, we who acknowledge the importance of acceptance are the normal ones. But we are becoming increasingly outnumbered. We're becoming increasingly outnumbered and there is this like follied way of thinking in the world that says that there is safety in numbers. Otherwise known as groupthink. Well, allow me to put a, st a statistic forward to you from the scriptures that should cause you to second guess groupthink as feasible to even anticipate as normal. The Bible says that the road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it. But the broad road that leads to destruction, many enter into it. Narrow is the road that leads to life and few there be that find it. But broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter into it. So to say more, to say that there is safety in numbers is to go against the grain of what God made clear is rather true. The Lord said it is unsafe in numbers. It is rather safe when you are among the small number of people that get how to operate. So therefore people who are still sober in thinking about the way that human humanity is supposed to be are the ones that are considered on the outliers they're called domestic terrorists they're considered uh radical extremists and in so being considered that we are then being shunned by the majority who are accepting anything and everything that comes and goes and they are on the broad road that leads to destruction that many enter into and they have no idea that they're about to plunge into the abyss as a conglomerate do you know that about two-thirds of the earth's population dies in the tribulation why would the lord massacre two-thirds in his wrath two-thirds if there is safety in numbers a third survives the tribulation a third let's go and do the mathematics with eight billion people two out of that eight billion not two sorry two point something two point five more or less billion people survive the tribulation i keep on saying this and it's ironic because the global elites are trying to do that. Nimrod and them are trying to do that. I keep saying that God is the be all and end all. Do you understand? Of popu of depopularizer. He's the depopulation guru up in this gangster. He is the one up in this monster that is going to depopulate the earth in a way that is going to be enviable by Bill Gates. He will covet God in how he's going to prosper to depopulate the earth. But God is not depopulating the earth because there's too many people on it. He is not depopulating populating it because there's too many carbon emission being emissions being emitted he's not depopulating it because there's too much methane in the sky or depopulating it because there is just too much whatever might be the reasons that the global elites are giving he is depopulating it for one reason and one reason only sin i keep saying this if the human race wants to conquer climate change <laughs> stop sinning walk in righteousness repent and watch creation groan less the solution to no rain in this country right now we've got no rain we've got a drought in particular but other people have got floods so it's either too little rain or no rain at all so it's it's either too little or no rain or too much the solution to the earthquakes that keep on shaking up the lands underneath your feet the solution to the tsunamis that keep on deluging the beaches and the uh, uh, um, beginning parts of the inland that you're living in the solution to the deforestation issue the lungs of the earth the forest fires is repentance if my people will turn their hearts from sin and repent and do what is better it is written i believe in two chronicles 317 i stand corrected but you can go look it up the lord will heal their land so mankind's solution to overpopulation is not so much to cull the human race through nanotechnology through all different kinds of scientific experiments that are causing death prematurely um it is not to like manufacture a pandemic so as to harm of the number of people in a particular ecosystem it is to get down on your knees and repent but we all know for the life of me and us and you and everyone we all know that human beings are nowhere near getting to a point of acknowledging christ as god they are nowhere near getting to a point of acknowledging that their sin is responsible for why the earth is shaking and groaning why there is no rain in south africa all throughout the beginning of spring why under heaven there is no power in this nation why under heaven there is no love among men why under heaven there is no order 
and why crimes are being left to slide under the door it's because human beings are sinners it's because you keep fornicating it's because you keep decimating your temples it is because you keep on lying bearing false witness it is because you keep on eroding structures that are healthy for society out of a desire for ill-gotten gain neutralizing those separation of powers for the sake of gaining totalitarian control over your environment it is power hunger absolute power corrupts absolutely that is the bane of the human being's existence so the crisis that we are currently in right now is not because the sun is too hot or that the ice caps are melting or that the snow is too plenteous the problem is you humanity you and your sin and your proliferation of it and then you're continuing to act like nothing is wrong afterwards is why it is that the world is coming to an end and guess what no matter what i say how much i might try to warn you you will still carry on until the very end for it has been prophesied about you to remain stubborn until the end the Lord will send you a strong delusion that you might not believe the truth but rather the lie because you have not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in your unrighteousness so he's going to send you a strong delusion he's going to make you worship mother nature he is going to put you in a position to embrace all the sin that you can ever embrace but with his grace and his glory his mercy taken away from you then you will know on that day that he is God. There is only one time in the history of the human race where mankind acknowledges God as a conglomerate. They have never done that historically as a batch. There's always been division, but there will be one time when there is no such division in concert, in agreement as to who the God of the universe is, and it is the very end of the ages. It is the second coming of Jesus Christ, and all the things that will happen in the run up to the activities in the book of Revelation when they are unfolding on the earth only at that stage will the human race acknowledge that the God of the Christians, the God of the Hebrews, of the Jews that rejected their Messiah, that is the only God. So since you will continue to ramp up in your insanity as it is prophesied of you in Matthew 24 that your love will grow cold because of your increase in lawlessness. It is not mine therefore to hope for a future. It is mine to try and snatch you out of the present that you might inherit a future because there is no future left at least not on this time on this side of eternity. It's over. The earth is ending to understand. The, co the concern that you presently know it as is coming to a blistering end. There is only one millennium left to run this earth and it's not yours to ransack further a declining human race um whatever haval herrera that okay from the end from the world economic forum went so far as to boldly profess to declare that the human race homo sapiens within the next couple of years are going to cease to exist he is not wrong he's not wrong he's not wrong they are going to prosper to come up with a technology that is going to ma merge man with machine. And that is the mark of the beast, whatever in shape or form it might come as. So his predictions are not wrong in all of his pomp and arrogance belonging to the Tower of Babel builders. He's not wrong. But what he's wrong about is the continuity of that bizarre ecosystem. The Lord is not about to go and create people in his own image that are supposed to function and operate in a particular way and then watch his creation merge itself with the seed of devils. In the days of Noah, it is written that in the last days, our days are going to resemble those days. And one of the characteristics of the days of Noah would be the mingling of the seed of man with the seed of fallen angels so that intermingling where people are speaking about merging science biology physio phys physiology with ai with artificial intelligence is literally tantamount to al aliens or fallen angels breeding with human beings those guys are not in the image of god anymore and that's why they are unredeemable once they take the mark of the beast that is why they get finished off the technology has already been um built it's here and so sufficiently enough for people to even start professing it or proclaiming it um on the media with no amount of fear of being considered insane or frankly megalomaniacal with some kind of a delusion of grandeur where you're trying to take over the world like pinky and the brain they are speaking freely in so a pompous way as that precisely because it is a time the time has arrived sorry where the lord will allow that allow that level of pump to be given away to finish you off for you have not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in your unrighteousness god is allowing the global elites to eat you consume you whole as a human being that you might come out on the other side something menacing freaky that is unacceptable in his eyes two-thirds of the human race will die no not because they all have taken the mark of the beast but because they will have been ransacked 
of the plagues that are going to fall on the earth. Some of them will be Christian, but the great majority of them are going to be the lost. We are going to get massacred, martyred in the tribulation. And by, by we, it's only because I belong to the body of Christ. And so anyone that is in Christ really is me. He's my brother. He is my sister. She is my sister, but I'm not going to be here. Christians are going to get killed. Their, their blood is going to fill up 1,600 stadia. That's what's going to bring God's wrath on the earth. But before then, you are going to kill one another. The seal judgments, there, there is just so much that I can speak about right now, but of course I can't get around to all of it. You will continue as normal. You will be drinking, being given in marriage, continuing about your business, and then in this normalness that you're continuing in, where your life is, you're on the phone, Njefela, when there is literally some disaster striking your camp, you will continue in that way precisely because the Lord has seen it fit to make sure that you continue in that way. It is his will, do you understand, thanks to your reprobateness and your wickedness, that you should carry on as normal in an environment that is not normal at all. And only people that see how abnormal everything is, only they will be saved, only they will be recovered. Only they will acknowledge that there is no solution but for repentance, but for Jesus, but for God. We're going home. And this stuff that I'm speaking now, I'm ignored. I don't get heard. I just woke up from a, a nightmare right now to understand that one of my relatives has just put witchcraft on my channel so I don't grow. So no one listens to me. Another one yet has said that all men that gaze upon me must think I'm ugly. I will not give more details as to which relative that is, but basically witchcraft that keeps on coming at the church, trying to prevent us from getting a message that is important because they have no interest in repentance. What they rather want is to get away with it. This family member is defeatist in the sense that I stand to benefit their lives in some way. We're family. We're supposed to grow each other. We're supposed to fester one another's agenda, if you want to call it that. We are supposed to proliferate each other's cause so we can grow as a family unit. Instead, they want me decimated, neutralized. My life is in danger. Do you understand? I am literally facing death. And this person does not want me to rise, come up for air for selfish reasons. No other reason but those. They're hanging on to their envy. It's just jealousy alone that is sparking this. And they don't want to be proven wrong at some point. So even though everything is falling apart, for them it's let's all sink together in the Titanic. That, 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 that same mindset with people who spread uh, a disease, who are like, I don't want to be the only one with it. Yeah, this individual is in that, on that tip. And with them being there, I basically am faced now with having to deal with all these demons they keep on sending me that I must keep on praying away. I need to keep on fasting and praying and doing all these things just to conquer like all of their darkness, like everything they send my, there's so, the barrage, it's the barrage for me. Like it's just so a litany of insults. Keep on slapping me on the daily. I cannot come up for air because when I pray off one thing, another thing keeps coming. It's uh, impractical. I can't live. I cannot live anymore in this ecosystem. This is not survivable. It's entirely unsurvivable. I can't make it in the state where I keep on having to sweep out darkness. Do you understand? So what then will the Lord do on that day?